So in this problem, we're given a piecewise function and then we're asked to do two different things with it. Um, so let's first look at the first thing. So our function is zero when x is less than zero and it's equal to k e to the negative x when x is greater than or equal to zero. Um, so the first part of the function asks us to find the value of k so that f of x is a probability density function. Um, so we need to use what we know about probability. And that's that the total probability space is always equal to 1. The most you can have is 100%. You can't have any more than that. Um, and so we can come up with this equation that the area under a probability curve is always equal to 1. And that's going to be the integral from negative infinity to infinity of our function. Now, for this specific function, we know that when x is less than 0, this function is equal to 0. So we don't, so we can start our bottom bound at 0. Um, so we can rewrite this as 1 is equal to the integral from 0 to positive infinity of f of x dx. And this is how we set up our problem. So now we're going to write our function in here um, and then solve this. And so we have um, our function is k times e to the negative x. And now when we look at this integral, the first thing we should notice is that we have an infinite bound. And so in order to integrate this, we're going to have to use um, improper integration. Um, so recognizing that this is an improper integral, um, also, k is a constant, so we can go ahead and take that out. We can rewrite this as 1 over k is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative x dx. And now this becomes something that we can integrate easily, and so we have 1 over k is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of negative 1 over e to the x evaluated from t from 0 to t. So now we can evaluate this function from 0 to t and so let's go ahead and do that. We have 1 over k is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of negative 1 over e to the t minus a negative 1 over e to the zero. All right, so now we can use limit laws to separate these out. Um, and so then we'll have one over k is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of negative one over e to the t. And then uh, minus a negative here makes this plus the limit as t approaches infinity of 1 since e to the 0 is 1 and then 1 over 1 is 1. So now we can evaluate these limits. Um, we have 1 over k is equal to, um, so for this first limit we want to think about what is happening to this function as t gets very very large and so as t gets very very large the whole denominator gets very large um, and so this is approaching zero from negative values, and so this limit is just going to be zero. And then the limit of a constant is a constant, and so we have that k is equal to one. So if we set k equal to one, then this function becomes a probability density function. And again, the important thing that we remember is that the total probability area under the curve is always equal to 1. And so then we set that up. We show that with this integral. Um, and that's how we ended up solving for this. So we got to practice some of our improper integration. Um, and we found that k is equal to 1. All right, so for the second part of this problem, um, they want us to find the mean value of the function, which is mu. Um, so we're using a fact that uh, mu is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of 
x times f of x dx. Um, and so again, when we're finding mu, uh, just like in the first part of this problem, because our function is piecewise and really only exists for um, values of x from 0 to positive infinity, we can go ahead and rewrite this integral as the integral from 0 to positive infinity. Um, and then, of course, our f of x function is just going to be e to the negative x, um, since we found earlier that our k value is 1. Um, so let's rewrite that. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of x e to the negative x dx. All right, so again, the first thing we should notice about this is that we have infinite bounds, which makes this integral improper, which means we're going to have to take the limit as a different variable approaches infinity. Um, so then we're going to have mu is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from 0 to t of, sorry, the function x times e to the negative x dx. Now when we go to integrate this, uh, we should recognize that we have two functions being multiplied by each other. And so we will want to use integration by parts in order to evaluate this integral. Um, and now when I'm doing integration by parts for my u, I'm going to pick something that hopefully when I keep taking the derivative, eventually I'm going to get zero. Um, that way the integral becomes easier and easier to solve as we uh, continue through the, the integration by parts process. So in this case, I'm gonna pick u to be x, which just makes du dx. And so since I've picked x as my u, my dv becomes e to the negative x dx into prime b. I just integrate that. And so we will get uh, negative e to the negative x. Um, so now that I have that, we can rewrite this. And so we have the limit as t approaches infinity of u times v, so that's going to be negative x e to the negative x evaluated from 0 to t um, minus the integral from 0 to t of v du, um, and I'm going to leave this as negative e to the negative x dx. All right, um, so before we evaluate this limit, we need to evaluate this at its values and we also need to integrate this. Uh, so let's integrate uh, that integral first. Um, so we have the limit as t approaches infinity of negative x. I can write this as over e to the x evaluated from 0 to t minus um, the integral of negative e to the negative x dx is just going to be e to the negative x. So 1 over e to the x evaluated from 0 to t. So now I can evaluate both of these. And so I have the limit as t approaches infinity of, here I have minus t over e to the t. And then when I uh, plug 0 in here, I'm going to get 0. So we'll not worry about that. And then minus, we have 1 over e to the t minus, and when we plug in 0 here, we're going to get 1 over 1, and so that's going to be minus 1. All right, so I can use limit laws to split this into three separate limits and evaluate each of them individually. So I will go ahead and do that. We have the limit as t approaches infinity of negative t over e to the t minus the limit as t approaches infinity of 1 over e to the t. And then the limit of a constant is a constant, and so I'm just going to leave this as plus 1. So now we're ready to evaluate each of these limits, and we'll look at them one by one. So when we look at this first limit, 
we're looking at the limit of the function of negative t over e to the t. Um, so we want to think about what's happening when t gets very, very large. And now we kind of encounter a problem here. Um, when t gets very large, our numerator becomes negative infinity. And when t becomes very large, our denominator becomes positive infinity. And so you should recognize that from Calc 1 as an indeterminate form when we have infinity over infinity. So we're going to have to use L'Hopital's rule in order to evaluate this limit. Um, so for our next step, I wrote this L through the equal sign to indicate that we've used L'Hopital's rule in order to evaluate this. Um, so to do that, we take the derivative of both the numerator and the denominator. Um, and that's because this is the, the indeterminate form, negative infinity over infinity. Um, and so for here, we still have the limit as t approaches infinity of the derivative of the numerator is negative 1. And the derivative of e to the t is e to the t. Um, and then minus the limit as t approaches infinity of 1 over e to the t plus 1. Okay, so now when we look at this function, it's no longer an indeterminate form. And when t gets very large, our denominator gets very large. And so this whole thing goes to zero from negative values. And if you think about that, that kind of makes sense because up here, um, this is approaching infinity, but it's approaching infinity much slower than e to the t is. Um, and so that e to the t in the denominator is going to dominate the whole function and make it go to zero. Um, but it's not enough to just reason through that. We need to use L'Hopital's rule in order to get to that point. Um, and so this first limit here is going to be zero. Um, likewise, this limit, uh, as t gets very, very large, our denominator gets large, and we approach zero from positive values. So we've got zero minus zero plus one. And so mu, our average value of the function, is just one. Um, so we went through all of that work and came up with a rather uninteresting answer. Um, but this was a good review of several concepts from calculus. So um, we had improper integrals, and so we had to use limits. We had to use integration by parts, and eventually we had a limit with an indeterminate form, and so we had to use L'Hopital's rule in order to solve it.